I'm your host, T. Mitchell Bell, and we are here live in the studio at uh, WNJR Studios. It's Acoustic Songs Live, and my guest today on the show is Crystal Lee Morgan. How are you, Crystal? I am fantastic. Cool. How, how are you today? Oh, I'm fine. Waking up, you yeah. know, Saturday morning, doing all kinds of stuff, running around errands, all that good stuff. So uh, thanks for coming in from Pittsburgh. Um, Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me here today. It's a pleasure. Um, usually ask everybody to play a song off, right off the top. What are you going to play? Sure. Um, this song is called Blue Jay. This is Crystal Lee Morgan on Acoustic Songs Live. song for a Saturday morning, afternoon. That's, that's Thank cool. You. you sound really great. Yeah. So um, I was looking over your bio and, uh, and we were talking about this a little bit before you came in that uh, you're the daughter of a songwriter and a poet. Yes. Yeah. So I imagine that creativity was around 
the house all the time when you were growing up, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my mother wrote constantly, and that was how she always expressed herself. That song that I just played was actually in tribute to her. She had died. Um, it would be this month, 12 years ago. And, I mean, she wrote endlessly, played Scrabble, like obsessed with like words and kind of got me into reading the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's just like just to understand what things mean and, you know, always in a library trying to, you know, just get lost in a story. And then um, my father was a songwriter and he still plays music in Maryland today. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's good. Keep it going, you know. Yeah. yeah the, uh, have you ever used a rhyming dictionary? Um, my roommate, well, previous roommate, um, had one, and yeah. I thought it was pretty cool, but I actually didn't know that they existed before I lived with them. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is neat. I didn't either. I read an article by Stang, and it was like his little cheat sheet. It, uh, he was kind of like giving a, 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 a look into what he does. You know, I was like, a rhyming dictionary? You're kidding me. You ever had one of those words, those weird words that you can't like, what rhymes with that, you know? And I find myself going like, oh, well, that makes no sense, you know, kind of thing, you know. Well, like one of the things we like to do in the car with my family, um, we like to play like a rhyming game. So somebody throws out a word and it usually works as long as the word is an orange because nothing rhymes with orange. But, <laughs> you know, it just keeps going around and around and around until we run out of things that rhyme with the word. And then, um, you know, you pick another word. It just keeps going. It's kind of fun. So now I'm going to be thinking about what rhymes with orange while you're playing your next no, song. No, like literally, probably. like nothing. I, I've like looked it up. Nothing rhymes with orange. Nothing rhymes with orange. I'll find something. I will. Shed. Yeah. I will. <laughs> so, so uh, what what are some of your early musical influences that you uh, picked up from, like around the house kind of thing? Um, Eric Clapton would be, I would say, the first official thing I was exposed to, um, and I just put him on a pedestal since then. I played guitar, nothing like him, but I love his style of songwriting. Yeah, I just think he's incredible. Uh, the Cars, I love The Cars. Oh, wow. <laughs> Somewhere I'm pretty sure I still have like the original tape, <laughs> like cassette tape. Candio <laughs> just, like, listen. or uh, oh, 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 trying to think of what. The one with um, Just What You Needed. and. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, they had a bunch of hits. Well, I mean, like it's pretty cool to see a lot of those hits coming back in kids' movies today. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I've seen that. I'm like, you know, it's like some young like pop band covering it, but I'm just like, well, they were they were actually pretty pop for rock and roll. Remember the uh, a car uh, or the Cars movie uh, or what was it? Um, the race racing movie. The uh, no. Yeah, the it was, Life I is think a it was Highway. Called, Life yeah. is a Highway. Um, the Rascal Flatts did that. The guest they had in last week. He actually made the video for the original song. Really? Yeah. The um, the original Tom Cochran Life is a Highway. The guy was on last week. He came from Canada, and he actually—that was the first music video he ever directed. Wow! I was like, geez, you know, <laughs> way to way to start from there. It was nice kinda, feather in the cap. It was kind of interesting, you know. And he and uh, still he's later on in life still playing music and got back into it. It was kind of a cool story. And and I, you know, that was I like to hear. I like stories about you know people and their songwriting and so forth. And you had a really interesting. One, being, you know, the child of a poet and a songwriter. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, what do you do? Um, <laughs> but you say you, you work in IT? Or, I it, do. My mom had remarried, and she married somebody who was incredibly business-focused. Mm -hmm. And he and I were, like, thick as thieves. So, you know, seeing, um, seeing a small business in and day in and day out and helping out with it and growing up with it in the house, I wanted to go to school for music. But I said to myself, I was like, I can make it. I can make it. I know exactly what to do. Like, I had it worked out in my head. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I'm not just ready to leap. So I went to a business school first. Mm -hmm. And I ended up just being really good at business. So <laughs> I've worked in um, a few different industries. And right now I'm working in IT. Well, that, I mean, that helps you, I'm sure, yeah. in today's, you know, social media driven web world. And, and, mm -hmm. and I would imagine with the uh, business background. Just it helps to be able to build a, your own website and manage your own social media and understand 
understand like how things work on the back end. I find a lot of my peers really just get lost in the business part. They're like, I just want to be creative. But I think the business side is actually very creative as well. I love yeah. it. I'm like, oh, okay, like we do this, 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 and this. You know, having like 11 years of experience doing that for, you know, a desk job, which isn't, isn't a bad thing. Yeah. It's, just, it's taught me a lot that's helped me with my music career. Well, there's definitely a market for there's creative people out there who who have absolutely no clue when it comes to the business side of things or, or do not have um, the inclination to want to do any of that. And I, there's, that's, a, that's a cool thing that you would have. Yeah, uh, I, I thought about that, like just going into one of those, um, what do they call them? It's like one of the cool spaces at CMU where a bunch of businesses kind of like share an office and have desks. It's like an incubator space. Oh, yeah. And just doing something like the back office side of the musician life. Yeah. You know, like doing expense reports and. Oh, like, really? <laughs> yeah. Like managing QuickBooks for somebody's business or, you know, appointments and calendar. Kind of like just like the back office stuff that. Sign me up. Nobody there. wants to do. And just, <laughs> yeah. Tra- <laughs> training membership fee and having like a copier so people can come make their own copies and stuff. That was yeah. like a, a pretty strong idea I had for a while. And then. Yeah, you know, obviously, it takes a little bit of gusto to get that, yeah, <laughs> get that going. But well, hey, in case you just joined us, you're listening to Acoustic Songs Live from WNJR Studios in Washington, Pennsylvania, and we stream live at WNJR.org and uh, broadcast at 91.7 FM. We have Crystal Lee Morgan here in the studio playing some uh, songs for us, and uh, you want to do another one? Sure. Okay. What's the name of this one? Hmm. I think I'm going to do a songbird. Cool. Keep it on the birds. Bird songs. This is the first song that I wrote on the ukulele. Awesome. I was sitting there with uh, the ukulele chart. I wanted to learn how to apply it. Yeah. So um, I just looked through the chart and just started looking at cool shapes. And I was like, oh, I'm going to try this, try this, try this. So I wrote this song. I was, I was very excited about it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, why not? That's the best thing. Your mind's open to it, right? It's just you're... You're a beginner, right? You right. Know? Yeah. <laughs> Always.
fault You like the Rocky Mountains And I love a challenge mm, 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 Just like I love all of you Nice I, I thought there might have been, I've done that before where I could like go to talk and then there would be another chord. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice song. I'm glad Thank that you, you uh, the business world didn't just swallow you up and <laughs> it tried. the voice like that, <laughs> you, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't not sing. Very it's expressive. Yeah. You know, and you, you're able to just go in and out of this very dynamic, you know, soft. It's really cool. They told me that I was singing before I, I was speaking. Like my parents were kind of, they were a little radical, very young, and they'd hang a microphone over my mobile mm -hmm. and just record me like kind of like la da da, you know, like wow, making sounds. They thought, I don't know. Do you still have? It? <laughs> no. <Did> it <laughs> <laughs> no, I've heard, I've heard the stories. They've sworn up and down. <laughs> you destroyed all the copies, like <laughs> irresponsible teenagers. <laughs> Oh boy! Yeah. So the uh, I, this is kind of a good segue when you were saying that that was the first song that you wrote on ukulele, you know, and a beginner, a beginner's mind. This is a good segue into some of the stuff that I, you know, we were talking about earlier. You know, approaching how you know I read I read on your Facebook page about meta being you know one of your things that you're into. Mm -hmm. How does um, how does that help in your songwriting? As far as uh, have you not, have you noticed any change? Is there some way where that, that might have changed that have helped you, like say mindfulness or something to that effect? Mindfulness absolutely does apply to everything. I mean, music to me is just another language. So it's a, it's a way of expressing. It's a way of communicating, not just your ideas through the lyrics but also feelings through sound vibration and I think that people are able to connect in a way that they may not be even consciously open to you know like when you hear something you just kind of start like grooving to it maybe it's in the grocery store or something like that or like a song hits you from your past and you're just like <laughs> you know that <laughs> mm -hmm. you know it's just it could be any range of emotions but um with mindfulness at least for me, I try to like create something that vibrates with people in the way that I want to be sharing life mm -hmm. and in a positive way, it, even if there's something that is negative, still turning it into something beautiful and letting, letting beauty and inspiration come out of it mm -hmm. and letting that be what resonates with people. Yeah, I, I noticed on your website you have intention statements. Mm hmm that's the first time I've, I've seen any songwriter or musician actually put that on their page. I think it's absolutely necessary, and I would recommend it to people because if that's something you're seriously pursuing, if you're booking gigs, you want to book the right kinds of gigs. You want to book the... You, it's not just about money. Maybe it is to some people, but, you know, if you are the kind of person who wants to be in a smoky bar for five hours doing covers of something, you know, I'm sure you can find a gig down on the North shore. They don't really care who you are, mm -hmm. but, um, if you want to, like my aspirations are more so, um, obviously after the baby comes a little while down the road, um, yeah. getting back into playing things more regularly at places that I love. Like there are a lot of places I play at in Pittsburgh that inspire me like club cafe, one of my favorite places mm -hmm. and Mr. Smalls. Mm -hmm but also like yoga festivals and, you know, playing at conferences that are related to music with professionals that I know and, and respect. So I think that that off the bat, without having to have a conversation with me, because you don't always get that opportunity with somebody who's booking, you don't even know who's looking. They can understand, oh, well, this is what she's about. And not just for gain, but, oh, how can I help her? Or maybe how can this person help me? Yeah. I found myself doing that, being more definitely more selective about what I where I play and what I do, and um, because 
it 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 does if you're in in that kind of if you're in a negative environment you know and maybe you're not getting the feedback necessarily that in in playing a bar gig people are really just there to listen to they really want to hear cover tunes or that kind of thing and that's cool too i mean it's that's um i want to sound judgmental or anything that's 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 cool people want to do that that's cool um but yeah for especially if you're a song a songwriter and you know you put so much of yourself into that song you know Mm -hmm. and you really have to be (laughs) (laughs) thick-skinned which i found out you have to be thick-skinned but at the same time you can't you can't uh you can't be hard inside you still have to keep that open you know oh yeah because then that'll affect your creativity, and it's kind of a a weird dance, you know, that we do. Um, because you like, hey, I don't really need the validation, but it'd be kind of nice. But you right. know, <laughs> yeah. So well, I, 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 hear you. I had a gig at one time where I realized I could literally stop playing and no one would notice because it was so busy and there were so many things going on and everybody was. You know, it was a bustle and it was an exciting thing. It was an exciting thing to be a part of. But at that in that time and space, just where I was and what I was doing, like there was just too much going on in the room and nobody was paying attention. And I thought to myself, I was like, okay, well, I'm here. Like it's not it's not about me getting all of this like praise and everybody like sitting down like glassy eyed staring at me. But it, it is nice to be recognized and for people to be present too to the songs so what I did was I just imagined I imagined it was almost like um like like a little angel on the shoulder like maybe they're hearing what I'm saying (laughs) but like they're they are involved in a conversation so keeping that energy up with the music and not letting the scenario around me affect or change my mind into a negative mental space where oh maybe I'm not good enough or Maybe like this, I just wasn't cast right in this role. And I was like, no, I'm absolutely exactly where I'm supposed to be mm-hmm. exactly at this time. And all these people are exactly here. And there could be something that I say or that I provide as a service that I'm not even aware of that could touch somebody's life. So it keeps me still focused on the service side of music, on mm-hmm. being present and and playing my role in that room. It's a good that's a good perspective, really. It, it, it does put it, I mean, you are in a sense there to entertain, you know, but you're not necessarily an entertainer, you know, um, you're not doing a magic act or something to that effect, you know, um, but, you know, people, there is a, a showmanship part of that and not everybody, you know, has that kind of like, Vegas thing going on, right? You yeah, know? with the tap dancing bunnies and yeah, you know, just in the you know, you're there like, hey, check out my guitar solo, you know, like uh, I just think about the '80s where it was like blah, 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 and people were playing, right. you know, like this over the top thing going on on stage, and um, you know, really, I, I I I will go, I will look for one person that's listening, and that's all that matters. That's it. If I see that one person is kind of tuned in, I'm cool. Uh, <laughs> and if the and if the if folks are coming up and there's I had a guy, hey, do you know any Hootie and the Blowfish? You know, I'm like, mm, nah. <laughs> it's, I play original music, you know. So I may do a couple covers, but you know, I was like, no, I don't know any Hootie. So it, it is kind of frustrating in a right. way. But yeah, it's it's it is. Yeah, you have you're you're a conduit, you know. Mm-hmm. That's really the, I, how I kind of look at it. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. And I could be the one person who's paying attention to my set. Yeah. That's you know? true. It's like <laughs> it, well, you have to be. Present. <laughs> right. You're right. Because if you're not, and if you're thinking about all that other stuff that's going on in your head, you know, then you aren't present, right? You're not, yeah. You're not really there performing. You're thinking about, hey, that person over there is talking to so and so. And, you know, you're really not. And that gets you off your game right away. You know, I'm very lucky to have only had this experience like one time. So um, I think I think that that's also maybe why I don't have like such a jaded perspective on it. (laughs) Yeah, cool. Because it's just like I haven't been in, in the situation very often. I try to book pretty selectively and don't stretch myself too thin. Yeah. Well, I um. We'll talk a little bit about you. You are like in 
you've been in like all these different bands. Yes. You are a member of, you and Jeremy are like in like all these different bands all over the place. You know? So <laughs> <laughs> keep, uh, keep track of everything. Um, but we'll talk a little bit. In case you just uh, joined us, you're listening to Acoustic Songs Live from WNJR Studios in Washington, Pennsylvania. I'm your host, T. Mitchell Bell, and we have Crystal Lee Morgan here in the studio. We broadcast at 91.7 FM and stream live at WNJR.org. Um, what do you, uh, you want to play another tune for us? I can certainly do that. Cool. Uh, speaking of songwriters in the community, this song is actually a combination. I don't know if you know who Morgan Arena is. Yes. She's one of my very best friends, and she's so talented. She wrote this song called Lover, and she played it a few times, and I fell in love with the chorus, but then she stopped playing it. And when she doesn't want to play something again, I totally respect that, but I was like, well, can you at least like send me a recording of the song? And she you know, had never gotten around to it, so I just, I was very inspired one night, and I was working through this more finger pick styling after I started adventuring more with the ukulele, and I was working through the song and I was just, it just hit me. I was like, the lyrics that she had for that chorus were just so, they like burned into my soul. And I asked her, I was like, hey, you know, is it okay if I, if I meld this? And she was so, fla- she was flattered and, you know, we love each other. So we did some meow meows at each other. <laughs> <laughs> meow meow? <laughs> meow meow. meow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is, but. Oh, well, yeah, we talk in meows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. Um, and it? and oh. this song is, I call it Apology, and she called it Lover, but this is my version, and this is my tribute to her and her friendship. Cool. I was waiting again. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> uh, uh, bro- I had broken fences on the show a while ago. Um, that's why I was just looking to see when that happened. Um, it was. It was a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
which they I guess they have dis they're, they disband and Morgan's mm-hmm. solo now right oh she is she's yeah. actually recording her solo record right now she did a uh, Kickstarter I believe oh yeah it was so, Kickstarter one of was those it Kickstarter or one of those fun, GoFundMe, GoFundMe or yeah <laughs> pledge music or there's yeah. so many of them I mean she has so many fans all over the place it, it made perfect sense and she's truly gifted. So I'm very excited to see what comes out of her. Yeah, I saw on your uh, webpage, um, you know, a friend of mine, uh, Stephen, had uh, has the yellow couch sessions that, mm-hmm. that you two guys, you and and Morgan did a. That's uh, one of the bands, Black Little Birds. Yeah, we did a project um, with Buddy Rigger, who plays keys and organ, is my partner, and then we had Manny Guevara on the drums and Dave Bush on bass. And it was, um, <laughs> Morgan and I had joked around about having a band since like years, years ago, back at um, Club Cafe where we met during the acoustic open stage. And I was like, okay, all right, we're either gonna have a band called Crystal Morgan Arena or maybe like something edgy like Black Little Birds. <laughs> Crystal Morgan Arena. <laughs> and um, when I went solo after Grey's Fool, I decided that I was like, oh, you know, Crystal Morgan, but then, you know, it kind of like started evolving and using, um, more instrumentation. I was like, I really like Black Little Birds. I don't know why that went away or why I, why I can't just do it on my own. And then as soon as I as soon as like <laughs> we started, Morgan's like, that was our band. <laughs> I'm I'm in. I'm in. I'm doing it. It That's was so much fun. We had a lot of fun last summer. Cool. And it, it's still in. You're still going with that. Or I mean, everybody or? in the group is involved in okay. other projects. You have Dave Bush, who's involved with Recluse fantastic band and buddy and i are involved with the common heart that's with clinton clegg Mm -hmm. and um, manny is in new york now Mm. so he he lives there and is a you know working musician and then morgan is obviously doing her solo record i mean just about everything i've ever done has been collaborative Mm -hmm. as opposed to you know like becoming the next you know solo artist huge band thing you know yeah or band okay yeah I'd say the Common Heart is probably the closest to a dedicated band. Everything else has been projects. Even Graceful was a songwriting project, mm-hmm. which I loved. I got to work with some incredible talent on that. Yeah, and I was listening to um, a few of the songs. Um, I don't think I ever got the CD, so you'll have to make sure you give me I'll, that. I'll give it to you today. Put it in yeah. the uh, rotation. Um, that that uh, you know, Acoustic Cafe is such a... Uh, you know, an incubator really of uh, talent, and I think that you know, I remember. I think I saw Morgan Arena, and I think I saw them there, and that was when I was like, "Hey, you guys have to come on the show." You know, like they just blew me away. I was like, okay, oh, I yeah. got to get them on the show, um, and I I really need to go there Mondays just for that simple reason to find people, and and it, Mondays is just the bad night for me I don't know it's like start of the week and the kids getting them yeah. off to school and all that kind of and uh by the end of the night like do I want to go play hear music uh, I'm like no I want to go to bed <laughs> <laughs> early I, I totally understand that I yeah. think that's exactly what acoustic cafe is though I call them classes you know like you have your class of and like the year almost like you know, a school. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the people who I met there that I would consider in my class, I met Nathan Zub there mm-hmm. um, from Recluse and obviously very accomplished guitarist and songwriter. Um, Tim Ruff. I don't know if you've ever met Tim Ruff. Um, I call him the acoustic crooner. Mm. He's another CMU graduate, just has an incredible voice. I met Jeremy there and I met Morgan there and Guy and um, just incredible people like Bob Banerjee, who's just yeah, Bob. He's Bob Banerjee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, Clint Clegg. So you know, they're just really incredible people. And um, Jesse Prentice is heading that up now. And you just have, I would say, just almost like your class president. You know, the people who get very involved. You mm-hmm. know, when they're new there and kind of like bring on all the other newcomers and and shepherd them. And then as you start booking gigs and start getting out more into the city and and doing things, you know, you start doing the open mics a little less and less because you have a scheduled rehearsal at that time or, you know, a gig or maybe your regular life stuff because you're booked up for gigs 
at the other times. But I mean, I know a lot of bands that have originated from there and some of the other open mics like. It's, yeah, it's a little. Yeah. 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 But, it, you know, you have like the dedicated musician ones. It's just like fantastic. And and um, Thunderbird has a really great one. Have you been over to that one? Uh, I haven't. No. Also uh, Monday nights. <laughs> I went through this period back in the 90s when I was doing songwriting and, and um, I was living in Virginia and I went to like maybe three nights a week. I was constantly going out to them. Yeah. And um, I uh, and it really was it was really it was really cool. You know, it was like a it was like a a group of people that you kind of met and got really tight with. And, and uh, I it's just it's just mainly time. It's just a time thing. I would love to do and go to all of them, but um, I don't think that uh, number one, my wife would would put up with it. <laughs> She'd be, Where are you going? Well, I'm going to an open mic night. Oh yeah, that's what you did last night. You know. Well, it's kind of tough because some. Th- I mean, especially in like the busier rooms, you get the chance to play for seven minutes, but you're there for five hours. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well. You have to start thinking after you progress to the next level and the next level. You know, it's a slow progression. The community, it's always good to be a part of the community and feed the community help in any way possible. But you have to also manage your time well and the creative time. So if you have two nights a week that you can dedicate strictly your creative space, you know, maybe once a month going to the open mic is good. But the other nights you want to really be working on practicing or writing and yep. fiddling. <laughs> and that's kind of like what, what I have, you know, this show for is I want it to be, it, it is for the community of, of uh, singer songwriters, uh, musicians to, uh, when they're ready to step that up to that level, um, I have people come from out of town and I have, I mix locals in, in too. So, you know, awesome. so it's not just, so it's just not people from out of town, um, in case you just joined us, you're listening to Acoustic Songs Live from WNJR Studios in Washington, Pennsylvania. We have Crystal Lee Morgan, who is um, she's sitting here playing some songs for us, and uh, you are like going to have a child, right? Yes. Uh, this, yeah. So she's sitting here playing Another the child. ukulele. Another child. Yes. 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 You have a seven-year-old. Um, yeah, the son guitar is, is no here. longer extremely feasible <laughs> no i w- yeah that would kind of get in the way um do you want to do another tune sure and uh when how much ma- when you're you're due in three months right i am due at the end of january cool all right so very excited and it's a girl so we're very excited about that that's cool yeah all right. my, son, my son chase who's here today in the studio he is going to be an awesome big brother and try to like remind him of that. I think he gets really excited too. Awesome. It's a sweetheart. Okay. You want a fun one? We do a fun one. Yeah, do it. It's okay. your thing. So the last song, Morgan Calls Lover, and I call Apology. This one I call Lover. Okay. <laughs> Just to make it so confusing for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Dreamer, cause I 
I don't give up when luck says I'm through success. It's a deceiver, always judging what I do. It might be five a.m. and I'm writing songs again and again. Go in, oh, lover, lover. Don't you leave me? You're such good company, lover, lover. to have like a shaker or a tambourine going on in that like uh, so it wasn't just it, you she was like <laughs> huh she i said it wasn't just you oh was she, she kick- started kicking was and she just started hitting the ukulele i was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> she was kicking while you were playing yeah. see she likes it and she likes it and she likes that song she does it's just a little bit distracting <laughs> i'm like i'm like wait that's not a beat like stop. <laughs> stop. we'll have to work on your timing right <laughs> have you picked out names we have. Yeah. Um, Luna Lee. Oh, that's really nice. I like that. I'm so like excited. That. I really like that. Yeah. I think um, Buddy and I have just such a unique disposition. We're very agreeable. I mean, we had the boy's name picked out almost immediately. And then the girl's name took a little bit of time and like lots of research. And we were both kind of like not sold on anything. And he just like kept going and going. And then I thought about Luna and then you know, kind of got some feedback from a family friend that they had known, you know, someone else who did that. And then we were like, eh, maybe we'll try something else. But then it just like kept, it stuck stuck with us. And we were like, yeah, that's what we're going to do. You just have to follow your gut. Yeah. We were having our ultrasound for our our third child and our oldest daughter was there. She wanted a baby sister. She wanted a sister so bad because she had a brother. And when they said, oh, it's going to be a boy, she she was had her notepad there. She was drawing, and she she drew a picture with a little baby with horns on it. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was so mad <laughs> because it was going to be a boy. She wanted a sister. <laughs> she was so... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, think we, we were, I was going through things a while, you know, like maybe a year ago, and I found, like, the picture. I'm like... Oh my God! You know, there it is. I tell her, you know, there are things that make boys and girls different, but that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> she really wanted a sister. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, um, in case you just joined us, you're listening to Acoustic Songs Live. We have Crystal Lee Morgan here. She's been playing some uh, 
music for us, some great songs. That that kind of you know that that brought to mind uh, Ingrid Michaelson to me. That kinda, oh, okay. You know, like had that kind of feel to it. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what song she had. I can't even remember, but it, it kind of had that like feeling, you know. Yeah, she has like a a very um, it's very upbeat and like kind of like. Yeah. You know, like. Bob yeah. your head and yeah, it makes you want to dance and stuff. You know, it just gives you a good feeling. The 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 um, beginning riff that kind of like reminded me of ragtime a little bit. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, oh, that's cool because again, I mean, I've only been playing the ukulele for about two years. Wow. So it's you know, it's my favorite toy. <laughs> yeah, I was here. Yeah, I was here. Kind of like just like feel you know, just trying different things together. And it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I was ca- just hearing try a it. clarinet solo in there kind of thing. Right. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that kind of ragtime thing going on. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, raw artists you had um, on your website. I, I had not heard about it. I didn't know anything about it. And um, I was checking it out, looking at it. And um, you're, you're pretty involved in that, right? Yeah, I actually had been given the honor of the Musician of the Year for 2015. Awesome. Yeah, it was it was really sweet. Um, but raw is so much more than music. It's every kind of art form, and it actually originated in Los Angeles, and now it's all over the world. So a lot of the major cities, like London, even in um, Sydney, Australia, uh, Japan. I mean, so and I mean, also involving the continental U.S. I mean, every every major city has one. It's a network of artists of every kind that put on like a bi-monthly huge show. So you usually rent either a big club or warehouse space. Mm. And there's a dedicated team that will come in and build walls. So every artist has their own wall or as a musician, you have a stage and each person brings about 20 or so people, just like you would for any other show or gallery showing and they make the efforts they pay for all of the advertising um they get involved with all the social media and the communities like pinterest I've, they posted pictures of me and stuff on pinterest and wow <laughs> yeah it's just very involved and and it's a national network so you have just this hotbed for talent a lot like that acoustic cafe is just for the songwriters mm-hmm. you have a hotbed f- for talent and and cross pollination of of the arts and what I found to be wildly successful for it was for my friends, Mm -hmm. my friends who are in the business community or, you know, maybe not even involved in music or art or anything. They came last year to the holiday rock show, which there's another one coming up probably like December ish, November, December. And they take all of the best artists who performed like throughout the whole year. And, you know, whether they're painters or graphic designers um, videographers just to here in Pittsburgh or, or just in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Well, there, if you're from another city, you can come and showcase in any city that you'd like to. Oh, I see. Okay. So, um, you have, you know, 50, 60 artists all in one place over three floors and there's music and it's, and it's very chic. It's fun. You see all these creative outfits and it, you know, I mean, there's lots of press. I've gotten several articles out of like, you know, just participating in this and it's really cool because individually, it's really hard to recreate that. It's really hard to get that kind of attention. Mm-hmm. But when you have something that is so just advantageous to the consumer, like you can come in and you can, okay, well, I walked past this wall and I hate this style of art, but there are 25 other artists here that I love and I just got all my Christmas shopping done. And it's local. <laughs> wow. You know, it's, it's supporting local artists. It's supporting you know, people who are perhaps like established, but people who may still be in art school, just trying to get their, get their foot out the door. And you have all the major gallery owners coming to these to kind of like search out new talent or, you know, talent that they're not aware of. And I've just seen it, you know, be great for that. And for my friends that are photographers, you know, getting, they put in time and go through and photograph things and photograph all of the artists and, you know, that helps get them additional work or it, it's, it's a really great, what a great opportunity idea. to build bridges. What a great idea. I mean, I, I hadn't heard about it. I didn't know what it was about. I didn't realize that they put on these events. It's every month. 
Bi-monthly. Bi-monthly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was, and then once a year, then there's like once a year is like the big holiday, holiday rock. And then what that award was, so the Raw Artist Awards, they're given per city and then country. So I made it into like the top five for the country. Wow. And was up for up for that award. I did not win it, which I'm okay with. <laughs> I'm totally fine with. Um, but, you know, that gave me the the availability to go to any city in the world and and participate in the raw artist network what a great idea what a great idea that you know what a, what just a great community to be involved in um and uh i was going to ask you also you just did a show at there were like three levels of <laughs> layer uh, cake layer cake that's right yes. you, you were saying these levels and i'm like wait a minute that's something different that's the layer cake was yeah. That's how ha- um, <clears throat> it's an incredible company. Um, Ziggy Sawdust Productions, ran by my friend Ziggy, who I met through the Raw Artist Network. And, oh, okay. You know, like bonds are formed, and then you know the point of Raw is to spur more things like this and spur you know a livelier arts community. So that was a show that involved artists like live painting and performing. Wow. And not to get super political, but you know, but Bernie Sanders committee had helped sponsor that. And they were present, so there were some people. Bernie wasn't there, but but there yeah. were some people, you know, it's just to kind of get the the young people who, you know, maybe transplants or maybe um, aren't politically involved, kind of just giving them some information about the campaign. And so you had, like, a lot of different things. You had three floors of music, which was wild and crazy and fun. That sounds like a blast. I wish I could have made it. I was actually out of town that weekend, but uh, that sounded that – sound, I looked at that I was like, Wow. Who pulled that off? Yeah. You know, like there must have been a lot of planning that went into oh, that. Yeah. Mr. Ziggy. You can't you can't ask for somebody who's more I mean, he's also a sculptor. So I think that should tell you something about his ability not just to, you know, take a block of wood and see this immaculate detailed sculpture. His artwork's really detailed. So I think he applies those same principles to production. And understanding, okay, well, if I want this to go off, I have to have the bands here. I have to have these people here, and these are where the tables are going to be, and these are the setups that we're going to need. And, you know, all the – I've never worked with somebody as organized as he is. And um, even when things go wrong, I mean, he's always on top of a way, too. Because, you know, things always – the cable doesn't work or (laughs) – Yeah, I – there you go. Ties yeah, he's into always on top of it. Yeah. What we were talking about at the very beginning, you know, having those business skills, you know, having that ability to do that, um, and especially like hurting a bunch of creative people like that. It's like probably like hurting cats. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> How many artists were there? I think there were thirty-five. Wow. Yeah, Nameless and August played there too. So um, we had that, and um, I think Beauty Slap, which I. I know them, but I'm not. I've not gotten to see any of their recent shows, but I just hear that they are incredible. Um, Morgan played there, right? Oh, Morgan played. Yeah. yeah, she played two hours after me. Cool, cool. Yeah, she's incredible. Well, um, would you want to do another song? Take us out with some music and uh, play something for us. Sure. Yeah. Um, I really gonna... enjoyed having you. Thank you. I can't believe that the time's flown by. <laughs> yeah, and Luna has made her presence known. Yes, I hope like. Maybe she'll, you know, maybe hopefully a little less kicking on the. Yeah. It's like almost if it, if it felt a little bit like um, a small, very small martial artist trying to break the block of wood. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> hey, knock it off. I'm trying to take a nap, you know? Like, <laughs> you know, this is really not necessary, but I'll allow it. <laughs> okay, let's see if Luna will cooperate. Okay. And uh, next week, um, we have an artist that's coming from Toronto, Canada again, and I am going to totally butcher her name but it's uh i believe kayana and uh she is traveling in a a uh self-made diy van home all around the country oh wow Uh, yeah so um tune in next week um and uh check that out and if people want to go see your go hear you and see you online they go to crystal lee morgan it's Crystal Morgan. Crystal Morgan Music. Yeah, Crystal Morgan Music. Crystal com. like the rock, Morgan like the horse. Music like music. <laughs> Dot com. Dot com. Okay. Uh, thanks very much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. My pleasure. This last song is called This Life, and it got me to the finals for the YAP Songwriter Competition. Oh, cool. And I also submitted it for the NPR 
um, Tiny Desk with Buddy. So if you want to see a video of it, you can find it on YouTube. Okay, cool. Crystal Lee Morgan here on Acoustic Songs Live. Go to AcousticSongs.com to uh, see the video from her performance today and uh, also sign up for um, the podcast on iTunes. You can hear the music. And uh, we will see you next week uh, here at Saturday at noon on WNJR Studios Acoustic Songs Live.